Hello, I'm John, and this is Sound Reaction. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to detect tempo of a song so that you can do really cool things in time. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is bring in some audio. All right, I've got my audio selected, and I'm just going to turn it down so we don't blow any ears out. And let's have a quick listen. Tell me you, tell me you see. So this has a nice groove and a well-defined beat. The first thing I want to do is kind of ignore this part at the beginning because it's freeform and focus on the first downbeat of the song. So that happens somewhere around here, right after that pickup. And I think this is the note, and it is. So just to make sure I get as close as possible, I'm going to go ahead and turn my grid off by right clicking and turning my fixed grid to off. I'm then going to zoom in on that downbeat until I find the beginning of the transient at preferably a zero crossing point, which is right about here. Once I find that zero crossing point where it matches this gray line, I'm going to hit command E, zoom out. Just select the part of the audio we're not going to focus on and delete that. I'm then going to right click again and set my fixed grid to one bar. Now that I have my grid set to one bar, I can simply click and drag my audio until it fa falls on a downbeat. In this case, we're starting at measure 20. That's fine. If I hit play, we're going to see that the downbeat of the next measure is not falling on the grid. It's just off by a little bit, but we can fix that. If we listen with the click, the click is a little loud, we'll also hear that it's not in time. Okay, so how do we fix this? There's two ways. The first way is to click and drag in our tempo section until our downbeat of the second measure, which is about here on the waveform, matches bar 21, which is one bar after bar 20. So let's click and drag until that falls on bar 21. So we're pretty close, but we're off a little bit. Let's try 96 BPM, we'll click and drag. And we'll check that, and that looks pretty good. But if we zoom out to the next measure, it's starting to drift a little bit, and it's drifting more. So let's try something in the middle. Let's try 95.5. That's closer. And now we'll try 95.2, and that's a little too far. So let's try 95.3. That looks good. So let's zoom back out and listen with the click from the beginning. And I would say that's right on. The other way to tempo map is by using the master track. So I'm just going to expand that. And when we do, I will switch to automation mode by clicking this button here. I will then go to my mixer settings and select song tempo. I get this grid line, or this dashed red line, and I can select any point of that line, click and drag, and I can adjust the tempo. I can then hover my mouse above that dashed line, click and drag, and we can see the waveform moving. This is really handy when you have a song that's not recorded to a click track, and it has some drift and you need to compensate for that drift by selecting maybe one measure at a time and stretching its time up or down. In this case, we're just gonna go with the session tempo and we're going to ignore the master track tempo for now. Now that we have our song tempo mapped, we can do all sorts of fun things, like identify a loop and separate that out and work with that in session view. So let's listen and find a four bar loop. Right 
here, so we're going to make a cut with Command E. We're then going to click and hold while pressing Tab on the keyboard and drag this into its own clip slot. I'll select the clip. I'll go into the Follow Actions section. I'll turn Follow Actions on. I'll tell it to play again. And now when we hit play, it's going to create a perfect four bar loop. There we go. Uh, and we could take this a step further. We could even potentially isolate instruments. So like this quarter note, let's place our cursor. I'm just going to adjust my grid to quarter notes and hit command E and now I'll bring this over to its own clip slot set its follow action to on and set it to play again and now we can even isolate that put it in its own drum track a drum sampler and we'll know that we've got a tempo mapped to the song sample from our original recording I hope this was helpful if you have more comments, questions, or ideas for future videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can get to them next. Thank you.